welcome to a new edition of Bookworm. Our program brings you the latest books and publications made available to our readers as well as other readers from the Arab world. And joining me today for a very special interview is our guest, Dr. Ibrahim Kirdeni, the World Health Organization regional spokesman, who will tell us about some of his favorite readings and writings as well. So do stay tuned for that. But first we begin with a look at the latest editions. Stay tuned. The Shiru Publishing House has recently published a new edition of the big thinker Abdel Wahab al Messiri's book entitled Partial and Comprehensive Secularism. The first edition was published in 2002. This book appropriates the dispute which Egypt has been witnessing these days about the meaning of secularism. Is it true the secularists are infidels, as some political forces considered in an attempt to exclude them? The late thinker Abdel Wahab al Messiri solved this dilemma in his book. Years ago, before the controversy about the secularist faith had increased in addition to the uncertainty of the term itself. In this book, al Messiri tries to remove much of the ambiguity about the term secularism, which has become one of the most important terms in the analytical discourse. He separates between what he calls partial secularism, which is separating religion from state and keeping silence on the final issues and comprehensive secularism, which is a separation of human, moral and religious values from the public and private life, in addition to taking holiness away from man and nature, so that the world will turn to a material entity utilized by the strongest. Moreover, and Mercedes indicates in his book that the common definition of secularism as the separation of religion from the state made the case superficial and reduced its scope. The English term is mentioned in the book's first chapter indicating that the literal translation of the term means the separation of religious institutions, the church, from the political institutions, the state. This meaning limits the process of secularization in the political field and perhaps in the economic one too. Maseri stresses in his book on making a relatively inevitable separation between religion and priesthood as well as the state in all human societies. The General Authority of Cultural Palaces in Cairo published a new novel entitled Meditations of Man Room by the author Ahmad Tosun. It's his second novel after the one entitled Family Funeral Ceremony. The novel's events take place in a weird hospital where no one can ascertain the identity or the fate of the patients. The novel's hero, Ayyid, tries to discover his true identity and find a way to get out of the trap he fell into. The author wrote a collection of four short stories. The last one was published last month under the title of Mermaid by Arabesque Publishing House. Besides the previous collections, An Old House, Cruel Winter and When Cats Don't Meow. He's also written many outstanding children's books. The novel Hug at Brooklyn Bridge was published by Lain Publishing House by Professor Azzeddin Shokri. He's an Egyptian diplomat. He'd already published a novel before entitled An Intensive Care Unit, which was published by Sharkayet Publishing House. This is the third novel after the release of his other novel entitled Killing Fakhreddin in 1995 and Pharaoh's Journeys in 1999, which were published by Miret Publishing House. He's recently working as a secretary of the Supreme Council of Culture. Bibliotheque Alexandrina has recently published a book by Professor Ismail Siragiddin, who is the library's manager. The title of the book is Architecture and Society. In this book, Professor Siragiddin discusses familiar topics, but they require different views and visions. He reviews the relationship between the architecture and society as an integrated and interactive mechanism in light of the context of the world and the contemporary Muslim society, which is marked today by rapid change. Professor Zarag represents the main elements of the mechanisms of change. He then writes some observations about the function of architecture as a reflection of society and its role in determining the progress in addition to its relationship with the changing cultural identity. Besides this, the professor shows his vision of the role of architecture in reflecting and appreciating the past and in understanding the present and looking for the future. The Faculty of Arts in Cairo has recently published a study by Professor Khalil Abdel Menaim Khalil. The book is entitled Justice in the System of the Islamic Political Values and it is a comparative study of the Western Civilization. 
The main concern of this study is consolidating the concept of justice and determining its status and role in building the system of the Islamic political values and comparing it to the political systems in the West so that we can determine to what extent the value system of both is different. At the early stages of the study, the aim was to make a closed and detailed comparison between the systems of the Islamic political values and the Western political values. Besides this, there was a try to make connections between the applications of the system of Islamic political values and the achievement of security and stability in Muslim communities, as well as increasing their power and influence. Justice must be used in understanding some of the critical issues which were raised in the contemporary political thought. For example, the relationship between men and women and their respective roles in political life. The issue of dealing with minorities in contemporary societies the issue of dealing abroad in contemporary international systems, in addition to introducing the concept of motivation and trying to look for a new methodology to study the political systems in its emergence, degradation and extension. All such things call for offering alternative Islamic civilization to face the issues and concerns of modern man and the advancement of their humanity. Dr. Ibrahim Kirdeni is a physician and a broadcaster. He studied medicine as it was his father's desire. Although he's a successful doctor and loves this profession, he didn't forget his love of the media. Ibrahim Kirdeni was born in the most charming city in Egypt and perhaps the whole world, which is Alexandria, where he formed a band and an acting troupe with his colleagues in Victoria School. At that time, he was just 15 years old. And during that stage, he spent a year in the United States. After coming back, his horizons were broadened and he became self-reliant and developed a great sense of responsibility. After graduation, he became an outstanding psychiatrist and then he got his PhD to join the university staff and gain professorship. At that time, he didn't forget his love of the media, so he came to Cairo and worked as a broadcaster for the European radio station. He then worked for the Egyptian state television. Actually, his simplicity drew people's attention. Meanwhile, he was working for UNICEF where he participated in many programs to combat many diseases such as polio and AIDS. On the other hand, he presented many programs and received the title of the best broadcaster for presenting Good Morning Egypt. Moreover, he interviewed the most famous superstars in Egypt and the world. In 2003, he fulfilled his deferred dream by joining the World Health Organization as a spokesperson and advisor for the organization. And that is what Dr. Ibrahim Kirdeni called back home. And joining us on today's edition of The Bookworm is our distinguished guest to tell us a bit more about his favorite readings as well as his own publications and writings. Joining me today on today's episode is our guest, Dr. Ibrahim Kirdeni, the WHO or the World Health Organization regional uh, member as well as um, speaker. Thank you very much, Doctor, for joining us. And Thank it's, you. A, it's a pleasure to have you with us here on it's Bookworm. It's a pleasure to have you here at home. Thank and, you very and much. And all the crew, too. It's really exciting to see everybody. Thank you very much, Doctor. <laughs> Of course, we want to talk to you uh, on a Bookworm about your favorite readings. Uh, when you have some free time on your hands, you end up uh, turning towards a book, picking it up and reading it. So what uh, books are you sharing with us today? Inji, I mean, when you say we turn to books right now, I think books were so important in our lives as we were growing up. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember ever, I had six sisters and a brother, and my father used to tell us, you just have to read, you have to read. And having elder sisters... They were all bookworms. Of course. So I would, they were hand-me-down books. You know, I always take their books. Those I are the think, best, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I think the person who influenced my life most was Enid Blyton. Enid Blyton with her secret seven and famous five. Mm -hmm. I remember we used to have groups of fives and dream. We were the famous five running all over the place, you know, cooking together, uh, making your home together. Through these books, I learned what it is to have friends, mm -hmm. to be a group to be boys and girls together. It was through Enid Blyton's Famous Five and Secret Seven. Mm -hmm. I think they really, really influenced my life. Mm -hmm. You also learned, uh, you know, you had friends, you'd go quickly and make some lemonade for them. Some s simple things. I mean, back then, you didn't have all those pops and everything ready, ready made. Mm -hmm. Then I moved on to King Arthur. 
I loved Lancelot. Mm -hmm. I loved Guinevere. I loved King Arthur. The concept of the round table, you know, mm -hmm. now it's very relevant indeed <laughs> at this current moment. But why? Mm -hmm. The round table, you know, everybody watching. When you're sitting at the head of the table, you're the big guy there sitting and giving orders. But when you have a round table, there's no difference. Mm -hmm. And we all have an opinion. And this happened to me throughout my life. When I worked with UNICEF, when I worked with the World Health Organization, my dream, even though the table at times was not rounded, I would have the round table concept. Mm -hmm. And Sir Lancelot, that love story between us. Mm -hmm. I Amazing. don't know if you remember it or aware of it. Mm -hmm. You know, the king was married to Guinevere, and his best friend was Lancelot. And Lancelot falls in love with Guinevere. Mm -hmm. And the king is in turmoil. You know, he loves his wife, he loves his friend, and he's so cut apart. It's something very, very deep that affected my life. Absolutely, Doctor. And today, you also have several books in store, some English and some Arabic. Uh, if you can uh, share with us some of uh, the books you have today. Of course. Mm -hmm. Nobody can go through life. And I did that very late in life, I have to admit, and I apologize. Mm -hmm. It's the Holy Quran. I have the Holy Quran in both Arabic and English. The Holy Quran in English, I had the most exciting experience of my life this year. I was requested to read the Holy Quran in English for the Internet. It's a huge project. It, within a month or two, my voice should be on reading the Quran to the whole world. I'm very excited about mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Because I, there's, there's, uh, it's going to be in Arabic and English. The Arabic will be read by one of the very eminent readers, and then my voice comes to explain this. And you had to put a lot of feeling in it. And it was the first time I myself go through, through reading the whole Quran. I did it this January with the revolution, actually. So it went, it, it coincided at the same time. I used to go to the studio every day and sit for hours, hours. It took a good month to read the whole Quran. And it moved me very much. Mm -hmm. It affected my life deeply. Absolutely. I think it's given me a, a spiritual uh, uplift. But it made me very curious also to read the Bible. Mm -hmm. It's very important to read them. All the heavenly books. Because these two religions mainly, and of course, uh, uh, Judaism as well, the these Torah. are the religions that are the whole world is following. Next, I want to read a little bit into Hinduism. I would love to know about Buddhism. Mm -hmm. I think people who are extremely spiritual end up, like, you know, Richard Gere, I don't know, all these stars, suddenly mm -hmm. they go to Buddhism. It's all about meditation. Meditation, and, mm -hmm. inner, Spiritual. In, inner perspective, mm -hmm. thinking deeply. Uh, trying to be at peace of yourse with yourself, trying to achieve harmony. And by being a psychiatrist, by profession, I, I think this, um, this is very important to read and feel. Absolutely. Another one? Yes, please. That has reflected <laughs> all for one and one for all. Do you know that one? Three Musketeers. Three Musketeers, in G. This very is a book, book that I love. Mm -hmm. The Three Musketeers. Athos, Porthos, Aramis, and D'Artagnan. Mm -hmm. I always dreamt I was D'Artagnan <laughs> with my sword, and we'd go and you know, play games together with the swords and all that. But the concept of all for one and one for all, mm -hmm. this is another thing you learn a lot from that book. Mm -hmm. As you grow a bit older, I shouldn't say older, I should say more mature, right? <laughs> <laughs> As you become more mature, the brothers Karamazov. And that was done, of course, the Ikhwal Ade by Nur Sharif at one point. And uh, that book is very deep. Tolstoy really uh, uh, affected, and he, he showed how brothers can be so different. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget a sentence in the book that there is nothing that can force me to love my brother just because he's my brother. That was said by Nuri Sharif in the film, mm -hmm. you know. And it makes you think very much. We all dream that families should be united always, that families should have eternal love between them. And this is what all religions aspire for. But sometimes reality, when you're a doctor dealing with inner psychological, conflict, issues. psychological mm -hmm. issues, you do find a lot of problems sometimes within families. Mm -hmm. So it was a very in-depth study of the Karamazov family and mm -hmm. the brothers Karamazov. That was a very, very 
intense intense book definitely indeed dr ibrahim uh, we will go to a short break and we we'll right back with you to continue uh, more about your readings and writings ladies and gentlemen and that brings us uh, to uh, halfway through our interview with our uh, distinguished guest uh, dr ibrahim kirdani and we will go to a short break and be back to continue uh, our interview with the doctor <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are still with Dr. Ibrahim Kardani on this edition of Bookworm, telling us about his most favorite readings and writings. Once again, Doctor, thank you very much for being with us today. So we were discussing uh, some of you, the most inspirational books that you've read, uh, a lot of life lessons taught from them as well. And you still have more uh, with regards to uh, realistic books that you were discussing uh, today with us. Actually, one of the books that has inspired me very, very much throughout my life. And I don't know how I didn't mention it, number one, because mm -hmm. I think Robinson Crusoe. Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe affected my life so deeply. It was about a young man who was shipwrecked, alone on an island, mm -hmm. and he learns to survive. How he survives. I'll never forget how he fire was so important to a person, how he put the two rocks together to make the fire. We saw the movie with Tom Hanks, mm -hmm. of course, mm -hmm. later on in life. But it's been done so many times. And how he has to deal with cannibals, how to shelter is important for a person. And actually, I think in most of my life, I learned that one is born alone and you die alone. Mm -hmm. So you have to learn to live with yourself, to like yourself, to be able to like others. Mm -hmm. And I think through that book, I learned a lot. He had to talk to his parrot first. And then later on, when Friday came, there was no racism there. He was black and white, and they managed to become friends because he needed someone. You can't really live alone. Mm -hmm. It's true you're born alone and you die alone. But the inter in the interim, you need to share. And through that book, book, I learned that even if I'm on an island on my own, I can survive. I went and bought a piece of land in the middle of the desert, an acre. And I'm tilling the floor, the, the ground myself, planting myself. The biggest joy in life is to see a plant grow, grow right. is to take a fruit off a tree. Mm -hmm. This is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And this was done through Robinson Crusoe. I'm even going to build a little pond and have fish, so I fish my own fish. Mm -hmm. You know, this kind of nature, going back to nature, is very important. They tell you, as you mature, plant your own garden. And you have to learn how to plant your garden. Mm -hmm. It's very important. Self-sustainability as well as a concept. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I wish more youth would think of that. You know, the, mm -hmm. the desert is rough, especially <laughs> like today when it's 40 degrees temperature. But, I mean... <laughs> it's a plan to wait. It's a way to go indeed. You also have several publications here. Um, well, these are some Motherhood and childhood, I see. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now we have... Uh, this is an NGO I belong to. Mm -hmm. And uh, we talked of breastfeeding during my UNICEF years, how important breastfeeding is. So later on in life, Dr. Al-Sabur Fadl and myself, we've been writing this book. And uh, we've distributed it all over. It's to teach mothers to breastfeed. And we say absolute breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. Your breastfeeding has to go six months. At least. Absolute, mm -hmm. with nothing. And until two years, mm -hmm. as the Quran also says. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I have some other books over there, actually, mm -hmm. which are all health-related. I'm becoming now reading in health very much, of course. Right. Because of my position in work and what I do, I have to be updated on H5N1, on H1N1. Mm -hmm. You have to always know what's going on with hepatitis, with AIDS in the world, what's going on. Polio, is it coming back in some countries or isn't it? Mm -hmm. You always have to be aware of all the new things that keep coming in health. Absolutely. And then, of course, the medicines, what's new. So you're always updating yourselves with books regarding health. Absolutely. And, and important. of course, on a more artistic front, the life and work of Nagib Mahfouz. Uh, Nagib Mahfouz <laughs> is someone who has really uh, uh, made an international presence. It's not that he received the Nobel Prize. That's something we're so proud of as Egyptians. And, and uh, I've seen a lot of his books made into movies, the Thulathea, of course, the, the trilogy, which is beautiful, and Zoael Meda is another one that's very, very interesting, mm -hmm. uh, many of these have been made into uh, films, and it's always fun to go and see Sukhariya, for example, read it and look at the book and keep comparing. Mm -hmm. 
was it the characters you visualized? Did the actors and actresses do the roles correctly? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it's something that has it's lived with us. It's part of our life. Absolutely. Very, very, very much so. So, Dr. Ibrahim, I want to ask you, how have your readings influenced your writings or your publications? You have uh, several publications uh, to share with us today. Surely there's been an influence from what you've read to what you've absolutely, written. Absolutely. But before I... You, your question is leading to a very important point. Mm. I was in an English school, okay? So my Arabic wasn't very strong for a while. Mm. I think my Arabic improved when I got on television and had to do my panorama Masriya, Egyptian panorama, mm -hmm. and I had to translate back and forth between Arabic and English with everybody. Mm -hmm. And then I had to translate the, English news, the Arabic news into English. So I found my Arabic was improving. Mm -hmm. But what really helped me when I was in school, I was, the I was the first in English and the bottom of the class in Arabic. Yeah. And then I remember Le the great Leila Rostum, this famous uh, TV presenter in the very early days. She said, it's very wrong for us to say we know English and we don't know our mother tongue, Arabic. That stuck. Mm -hmm. I said, how can I speak English better than Arabic? I'm an Egyptian. I have to know Arabic well. And really, I re they told me, read. In summer, read. I remember the first Arabic book I read. It was Ahsan Abdul Quddus, Tukub Fi Thawb Al Aswad. And that one book, you will not believe what reading does, and I'm telling you, all your kids have to read. Mm -hmm. I jumped from the bottom of the class to the third in the class, immediately in Arabic. Mm -hmm. And now I am writing in Arabic. Right. And uh, what I'm writing actually is all my life experiences in a very short story fashion. I'm calling it Kirdaniyet because it's my Sorry. my background mm -hmm. of what's happened in my life, the year I spent in the United States. Actually, the year I spent in the United States, mm -hmm. I spent one year in the United States with an American family. Mm -hmm. And I called them mom and dad and my American brother and sister. My brother is still in, in close contact. Mm -hmm. And he just sent me these. This is something very interesting. How books are turned into CDs. This is John Sanford's Rough Country. Mm -hmm. And he's telling me, your voice is okay. Why don't you start reading all these books in English on CDs mm -hmm. as a new project? Mm -hmm. So he sent me an example, and I think I might try it. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's very strange. He sent me this, and then immediately I was asked to read the Quran. Mm -hmm. So I said, it's, oh, a good no, sign. <laughs> it's a sign. Mm -hmm. It's a sign. If you believe in science, mm -hmm. it's definitely a sign because I, I did the Quran. But now I'm thinking also of reading like book like that, for example, you have to take the rights and of all course. that. But I mean, if you do that, it could be an interesting thing. I mean to say that nowadays, when we talk of library, we're so used to think only books. Mm. Now audio library as well. This audio library, mm. you have your, 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 I mean, I have all my Beatles, mm. Elvis Presley, mm. uh, Barbara Streisand, mm. who you like as singers as well, Arabic as well. What I write about, I also write about this in my Kirdaniyad book, experiences of patients I have treated as a doctor. Mm -hmm. I talk of my exes, marriages, everything. And I use like, uh, I was the love that, that was, mm -hmm. you know. I, I try to use, uh, mm -hmm. you know, any phrases, mm -hmm. phrases from songs mm -hmm. that would inspire the writing. Mm -hmm. So that the title would attract you and then you would read, mm -hmm. you know, in this way you would be able to. And of course, uh, this woman has inspired me so much. You have her picture in the house, Sabah. Mm -hmm. I've written so much about her mm -hmm. because right now even her serial is, is on, on television. Is yes. on television mm -hmm. in and she calls every other day from Lebanon. She tells me, are the Egyptians watching it? Mm -hmm. Are they enjoying it? Tell me, is Carol Samaha doing a good uh, <laughs> role? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of funny to see her at that age still so full of life. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Uh, Dr. Ibrahim, you also have several other publications, uh, 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 audio well, as well. Before the audio mm -hmm. is that uh, this is, I've always done magazines ever since I was in high school. I love editing, publishing. So I've, d this is the style, this was called bits and pieces, the English copy I don't have. It's mm -hmm. called bits and pieces. I use a lot of pictorials with very little writing. Mm -hmm. But I think the pictures usually speak for themselves when somebody wants to get an idea. Mm -hmm. And this was printed for the World Health Organization. Well, regularly, we have six copies of it so far. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's an excellent way of keeping track of everything you do. Absolutely. Using 
simply the pictures, and captions. write up captions, and then you look through it and you remember everything. I think my motto in life is less is more. I really believe less is more. Mm -hmm. I don't good. like people who talk, 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 talk. Mm -hmm. You can say it all with one word. Simply. Simply. Right. And it will reach. Even the stories I'm writing now, the maximum is two pages. I never write more. Mm. I think it's, uh, it's very important to reach people with feelings. I think I've tried them, I've tested. You know, I always like to pre-test everything. Mm -hmm. Everything you write, I pre-test. I run around. I've written speeches a lot for uh, many public figures mm -hmm. who are very important when they come to speak or address the public because taking into account that you are a doctor and at the same time you are this person who's worked on television for years so you know you have what that it's experience, like. Yes. You have that experience. Mm -hmm. So you know what needs to be said most concisely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And finally, doctor, uh, these uh, audio these, publications. These are audio publications, mm -hmm. again, that I like to keep. Obviously, this is an evening with WHO. I'm going to give you that. It's something. Mm -hmm. uh, I've done a lot of vo voiceovers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is emer emergency risk communication. This was done with my voice to during the H5N1 and H1N1 and would distribute it all over mm -hmm. so that people would know what to do. So we use these as trainings. You have to write them, you have to put the voice over and do it. And these are different healthy lifestyles. Mm -hmm. Don't smoke, by the way, we're talking healthy mm -hmm. lifestyles. So if mm -hmm. you smoke, don't smoke. This is AIDS and media. These are all things. And this was actually, I'm trying to keep uh, the programs I appear on, mm -hmm. I think this was done by Channel 5 in Alexandria, which I thought was very inspirational too, really. As soon as you finish, they give you this as a gift. Uh, yeah. It's a very, very nice way. I wish more it's a people nice would do that. Because you can have your own library of what you've done mm -hmm. for the future. So, Dr. Ibrahim, finally, uh, any uh, future publications that we can expect from you soon? I'm working on the, the latest, which is Kirdaniyat, which I hope to do it in very different using all the new technology, mm -hmm. internet, uh, CDs, and books as well. I'm kind of hoping to do that. I hope the youth will gain somewhat from the experience I've had in my life, both in the health field and in the media field. Right. On that very positive note, Dr. Ibrahim Kardani, thank you very much, sir, thank for you, joining Nancy. us. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of our interview with our distinguished guest, Dr. Ibrahim Kirdeni, WHO, World Health Organization Regional Spokesman. Uh, many thanks for joining us and do stay tuned. And that brings us to the end of this edition of Bookworm. Many thanks for joining us and looking forward to seeing you again next time. Till then, it's goodbye.